Woo. Oh man, that is by far the best I've done on getting a nice thin crust on it. A little while ago, YouTube decided to show me a video of how to build a pizza oven in your backyard for way less money and time and effort than most standard traditional pizza ovens will be. The original video I saw was from a channel called Chef Steps, and they've got a lot of great content. And I was really intrigued by this because I liked the idea of a pizza oven that doesn't cost thousands of dollars and become a permanent fixture in your yard. But there were a few things that I thought could be improved. So today we're gonna to take a look at the original design and three improvements that I think can be made to it to make it more useful and more user friendly. This whole oven is made from two things, bricks and paver stones. Bricks are the smaller ones here, the paver stones are the larger ones. All of this is available at big box home improvement stores and really is not expensive at all. This whole thing is less than $100 to build. Let's take a closer look at how this works. In the original video, they recommended building this on gravel or something like that, and I think that's a great idea. I've got it here on my patio, just on the concrete, just as demonstration. I actually have not used it here, and I wouldn't recommend putting it directly on concrete. Uh, there's a good chance it's going to stain and possibly damage concrete if you put it right on that. So even if you have a concrete back patio, I would recommend getting some gravel or some sand and building the whole thing on that. The important thing is that you start with a nice flat surface, so if you've got gravel, make sure it's pretty good and level before you start building up on it. It's set up in a few layers. At first, we've got four layers of bricks before our first paver stone. The paver stones are going to come in different sizes. I think the uh, original recommended size was a 24 by 24. The ones I have are 20 by 20 because I could not find 24 by 24 anywhere near where I live. But I think that you can make it work with this slightly smaller size pretty well. After the initial four layers of bricks is the first paver stone. And the way it was originally set up, you have you know the firing chamber down here, and then you put the paver stone on top, but you leave a gap in the back. This allows for airflow from the fire to go in down here at the bottom, up at the back, and then travel out across the front, heating this paver stone directly from beneath and indirectly from all the heat that's washing up behind it and over it so that you have not just a hot stone, but hot air above it. On top of that, a couple more layers of bricks and a final paver stone as a sort of ceiling to your oven that holds all of that heat in and allows heat to come from not just the bottom, but also from the top as you cook. And this is a cool design and it works pretty well. You can get a nice airflow with the fire down there being pulled up, circulating around, heating everything up, and it can get really nice and hot and that's great. But there are three things that I recommend changing if you really want to have a very effective and useful pizza oven in your own backyard. Researching this type of oven build online, I found some people concerned that these pavers might be made with lead in them. So I got some lead testers to see if what we've got is going to be toxic in that way, or if we're in the clear. Well, I would say it certainly picked up some dirt from the paver, but pink or red is supposed to be the sign that lead is present, and I am seeing absolutely none of that. I'm gonna go with no lead. Now, when I started building this for my own backyard, I was curious if anyone had come up with any cool ideas of how to improve on it even further. And I didn't find a lot that had changed, but I did find one person who had built one that had a comment in the video suggesting that if you have the fire here, and you put the pizza in here, that means that every time you want to reach in to look at your pizza, put your pizza in or take it out, you're reaching right over the possible flames that are shooting out of the, the front here where all the fire is. And he said, well, why don't you just turn it so that you put the pizza in on the side instead of the front? And I haven't actually seen any videos of anyone trying that yet. So I decided to try it and I loved it. I thought it was so much better of a design. So that is the first tip, is rather than make it so that the pizza and the fire go in on the same side, you have one side for the fire and 90 degrees from that, that's where your pizza goes in. With the bricks and the paver stones that I'm using, there are actually two primary advantages to turning your oven like this. The first, like I just said, is now I'm gonna be putting the pizza in from this side while the fire is over there. If any flames are shooting up out of the opening, I don't have to reach directly over those to get to my pizza. And the second is that 
because the pavers have to be supported by something and support more above it, you have to have bricks on two sides of the stone. And if you've got a brick stacked on two sides, then the size of pizza and your access into the cooking area is restricted. But if we have a stack of bricks going off to the side of the paver and bricks in the back, then we've got a wider opening and a larger cooking area to have our pizza. Less of it is blocked off by more bricks. So we just stack the bricks up in basically the same manner, but now we have a slightly larger cooking area and we aren't reaching right over flames. So changing the direction of where you access the pizza relative to the fire is the first improvement tip. The second has to do with the structural integrity of the whole pizza oven. These paver style bricks and paver stones are not rated for high heat. And these ovens should be getting up to at least 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that means is that over time with multiple heatings and coolings, they're likely to crack and fall apart. That's the disadvantage of the cheap oven is that it's not gonna last forever like a, a big permanently installed, cemented and mortared together with a, a strong multi-layer setup. It's not gonna last like that. The advantage is that if something cracks and breaks, you can just replace it. You know, if one of these bricks falls apart, okay, get another one, it's like 60 cents, throw it in there. So to try and increase the longevity of the pizza oven, I've welded together this little metal frame. It's very simple, not complicated, just made from cheap welding steel from Home Depot. And I've just got this as something that I can put underneath the main paver stone. You don't have to use something like this. You could just get a, a sheet of expanded steel, that sort of diamond pattern mesh, something to put under this so that if it cracks, it's not gonna fall apart and fall in nearly as quickly. You could have this cracked into multiple pieces, but as long as it's holding generally together, it should still work for cooking a pizza. Now with that frame in place, it's gonna be a little bit more sturdy and it's gonna hold up a little bit longer. It also gives a slight advantage in that the bricks I have are about an eighth to a quarter of an inch thicker than the paver stone. I was able to build it up without really even noticing the effect, but if I have the metal frame under here, it actually raises the paver stone up just a little bit higher and actually makes it closer to level with the stacked bricks. Again, it's not a large functional difference, but it does aesthetically look a little better. So that metal support frame, whether you're using this sort of double H setup that I have, or if you just want to get a sheet of expanded steel, that's my second tip, is finding a way to reinforce this concrete paver so that if it cracks, you can keep using it for longer and don't have to replace it as often. The third tip comes from the fact that I don't like being on the ground to cook. I have to either crouch down or kneel to see into and access the cooking area of my pizza oven. So the third tip is to just find a way to raise it higher up. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could stack bricks higher. You could stack bricks and have them mortared together. I decided to go ahead and build a steel frame to hold the whole thing off the ground. I have another paver stone as the base for it with its own support underneath it. This is probably going a little fancier than a lot of people would want to do, but there's lots of ways that you could get something off the ground, insulated so it's not at risk of burning, and still use your pizza oven without having to kneel to get it in and out. This is the steel frame that I built to hold my pizza oven. It's specially designed to have one of these paver stones at the bottom of it in a nice secured frame, and then there's more support struts underneath, one going this way and one going this way. So you can see that after just a couple of firings, this stone has started to crack, but it's not started to move at all because it's supported so well on all four sides and underneath. I've got these two smaller pieces off to the side. These are made from a thinner paver stone just to make sure that they balanced out to the same height as this. And now I'm going to build that exact same pizza oven up on top of this. There you go, now our pizza oven is at a much nicer height. I don't have to even bend down to be able to access it or see into there. If I'm trying to look all the way in, sure. But 
the fire still comes in at a side, not the same side where I put the pizza. And I have much better access to it. This frame is very sturdy. Despite the fact that I have over 300 pounds of bricks and pavers on here, it's not going anywhere, it doesn't move. And so I don't have to worry about someone bumping into this and throwing all of the bricks everywhere. In total, this build uses 44 whole bricks, five half bricks, which you don't have to have it in half. You could just have it sticking out a little bit. And that's if that's okay with you, then it's still gonna work just as well. But 44 whole bricks, five half bricks. And because I have this base, I'm using three of these 20 by 20. Now that I've got the oven set up and built, I'm gonna fire it up and I'm gonna share with you everything that I have learned about using this. Now, keep in mind, I've only used it a couple of times so far, but even just with that, I do think I've learned good stuff. The first thing to share is that originally, I had some wind coming in about like I do now, and I thought, well, I'll point the fire away from the wind. I had it, the fire entrance over on this side. And what seemed to end up happening is the moving air going around the box was creating negative pressure and pulling all of the hot air out where the fire is supposed to be going in. So I've turned that around and it seems to work a lot better. Now I've got the wind coming this direction and some of that air is gonna be blowing in and helping it flow through instead of sucking it out the back and lowering the heat temperature. After about an hour, the oven is up to temperature at just over 700 degrees, which is a lot for an oven, but not all that much for cooking pizza, which typically gets cooked at a very high temperature. And I've got pizza dough and some flour. Now I am still very much an amateur when it comes to forming pizza dough into pizzas. And I wish I were good enough to toss it reliably into the air to stretch it out, but I feel like if I do that, two things are gonna happen. One, I'll just drop it, or two, the wind is gonna catch it and make me drop it, even if I hadn't been about to anyway, which I probably was. Okay, that's a decently stretched out thin pizza, and it's about as big as I can get while it still fits on my peel. And with uh, apologies to all of the Italians out there, I am American, I'm going to be making a pepperoni pizza. And actually, I take back my apology. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. Cornmeal I put on the peel first to make it so that the pizza can slide off into the oven. Otherwise it would stick a lot. Hopefully I had enough on there. Oh yeah, that worked beautifully. And hear the sizzling. Mostly that's the cheese that fell off, but still, it's a good sound. Now it hasn't been in the oven for more than 45 seconds or a minute. But because the oven doesn't necessarily heat perfectly evenly with the fire on one side and based on wherever I've built it down there, I'm gonna use the peel to rotate the pizza a little bit as it cooks. Oh, and the pepperoni. I got a pepperoni that's like specifically one that cups, which is great. Um, and it's doing it, which is a very good sign that there is enough heat on all sides of the pizza. This right here, that split, that's where I, uh, I threw it too hard at first and it slid and hit the back of the oven. And then when I went to scoop it out, I like pinched it with the back of the peel on the oven. That's all right. Look at that. The oh, leopard that's so spotting, good. heard it called. Golden with the dark spots. Ooh. Oh man, that is by far the best I've done on getting a nice thin crust on it. It's crispy, it's light, it's airy, it's got some good flavor to it. I'm very happy with the ratio of sauce to cheese that I got, and I really enjoy the smokiness that comes from this. Now, the wood I've used, I actually have a landscaping company near me that I was able to go and buy all this fruit wood. So this is all from fruit trees, which makes a very nice flavorful smoke. 
and uh, I think it does an amazing job. Now, of course, this is just the toppings I did. Make whatever kind of pizza you want. This should cook beautifully in the brick oven pizza. The, uh, the three steps that I demonstrated how to improve this backyard brick oven pizza work really well. Turning it, putting a metal support on there, and lifting it up off the ground gives you a much better result that's easier to use. Guys, if you like this type of video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not. And as always, a huge thank you shout out to my supporters on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting me there, the link is down in the description. Enjoy your pizza.